Hey guys, this week's video is all about hair loss. We're going to be talking about what causes it, we're going to be talking about the best hair care advice and diets that can help prevent hair loss. Also, we're going to be talking about vitamins. Do they actually help? Do they not help? We're going to be talking about specialist treatments that are available and we're going to talk about when you should seek medical attention. Now before we begin, I understand that you, like myself, are probably a very busy person. So to make your life easier, this entire video is chaptered all in the description below. If you want to find any specific information at any point, feel free to click on it, find a relevant chapter that you want and go to it. However, I would highly recommend you watch the whole video. Now let's begin. Okay, so there are many things that can cause hair loss and actually a small amount is actually quite normal because as our body makes new hair, we lose some and that's the sort of cycle that we do. And also as we do things during the day, for example, combing our hair, touching our hair, washing our hair, all of these can cause some amount of hair fall we usually lose about 50 to 100 hairs per day, usually without even noticing actually. Now the problem can come when we feel like we're losing too much hair or it's not regrowing back, okay? Now if you feel like that, and that's the reason why you're watching this video, I would highly recommend that you speak to a healthcare professional. So if you haven't already spoken to a healthcare professional, please do so they can investigate for any underlying causes. That's the most important thing. Now some common causes of temporary hair loss include stress, illness, poor hair care, vitamin deficiencies, cancer treatment and scalp infections. Some common causes of more permanent hair loss include increasing age, hormonal imbalances, polycystic ovary syndrome and hereditary hair loss, also known as male or female pattern baldness. Now for some of these conditions, you will need to speak to a healthcare professional for specialist treatment. That's why I'm saying it's so important that you get a healthcare professional involved early. Don't wait later on once a lot of your hair has fallen out before you speak to a healthcare professional. The earlier you do this and you get the ball rolling with this, it's gonna be far more beneficial for you. So that's super important that you do that. Now if you have already spoken to a healthcare professional and you're looking for general tips right now to do that are gonna help, we're gonna go through them now and afterwards we're gonna talk about some of the specialist treatments that are available as well. Okay, so let's begin with tip number one. This one's gonna sound a bit basic, but it's all about hair care. And what I want you to think about is these kinds of things. If you're regularly blow drying your hair, chemically treating it, straightening it, curling it, all of these are gonna cause damage to our hair and it's gonna damage our hair shafts. It's gonna help, well, it's not gonna help. It's gonna make them break a lot easier. So the reason I'm discussing this is exposing our hair to heat constantly can actually dry our hair. But not only does it do that, it's also gonna damage those vital proteins in the hair and those vital bonds that are needed in the hair to maintain the structure. Once you damage that, the hair is gonna be far more brittle and more prone to breaking, and we don't want that. And this links nicely to our hair cycle. Our hair cycle has a natural growth, regression, and rest. Now, if you're doing this and you're causing damage to the hair and it's breaking, and on top of that, you've got your hair just falling naturally, then we're gonna be at a point where actually our regrowth is gonna be much slower than our growth. I hope that makes sense. So I guess the next question is, well, what options do we have? Well, for example, you can try and let your hair dry naturally, and if you must blow dry, try and keep the dryer at least five inches away to try and protect the hair follicle. When using any heat, try and also always use a heat protectant spray. Look for products containing silicon or keratin, as these ingredients can help seal the hair cuticle. You also want to avoid chemical treatment where you can, keeping things like perming or dyeing hair to a minimum, and use a deep conditioning mask with ingredients such as aragon oil, coconut oil, or shea butter to try and re-nourish your hair. Now moving on to point number two, overwashing your hair. This is a common thing that a lot of patients do. You need to make sure that you're not overwashing your hair because our hair and our scalp naturally produce oils that also help nourish the hair. So if you're overwashing, if you're using harsh shampoos, all it's going to do is get rid of those natural oils that are so important for keeping our hair nice and healthy. So what you need to try and do is wash your hair no more than twice a week. Now I'm not saying don't go to the shower, still go for your shower after you've gone for your run, after you've gone to the gym or whatever, but avoid the hair. Only wash the hair twice a week and also use a mild shampoo, rub it into the scalp. Don't bother rubbing it into the hair. If you've got longer hair, just rub it into the scalp, wash it off. When you wash it off, Shampoo is going to run through your hair as well and it's going to clean it. So don't be too concerned about rubbing it into the hair. And once you're done, once you're done shampooing your hair, always make sure to condition as well. Now, just as heat styling can damage your hair and encourage hair loss, certain hairstyles can too. So for example, tight braids, ponytails, or any style that pulls on the hair shaft can cause it to fall out. Now, regularly pulling on the hair can mean more falls out 
before it has a chance to regrow. So try and avoid tight hairstyles like these if you're trying to prevent hair loss. Now moving on to tip number three, you need to make sure that you're having a healthy balanced diet. So you need to be having your five a day of fruit and veg. This is super important so that you can get all the vitamins and nutrients that you require, that your body can then function properly and including your hair follicles, okay? so. There are many studies as well about nutrient deficiencies as well, aggravating hair loss. One of the most common ones, for example, is iron deficiency anemia, okay? So if you want more information on this, I will leave more information about it in the description below. And I do have a few videos about iron deficiency anemia and what you can do about it. So if you want more information as well, feel free to click on the links. So as a result, it's super important to eat a range of foods from each food group to ensure your body gets all the vitamins that it needs. Studies have shown that antioxidants, iron, zinc, niacin, fatty acids, selenium, vitamin A, D, E, and biotin all have a role in maintaining healthy hair growth. An unbalanced diet or a high in processed foods diet will lack these nutrients and have an impact on your health and on the health of your hair. So after hearing that, I know what you're probably thinking now. You're probably thinking, well, if all those vitamins that Abraham the pharmacist just discussed are good for hair growth, I'm gonna go and buy all of them and take all the vitamins that are necessary for hair growth. But my friends, please do not do that. I'm gonna tell you why now. Lots of research has shown that there is no evidence that taking a lot of these vitamins or supplements is gonna help with hair loss, okay? So don't think to yourself that, oh yeah, I can go and buy all these vitamins and they're gonna help. You're just gonna waste your money and there's no evidence so far suggesting that it helps with hair loss. However, here's the good news. There is evidence that having a healthy balanced diet, so eating well, eating the foods that you need to eat that contain all these vitamins that we've just spoke about can help with hair loss. So it's essential that you're getting all of these through a healthy diet. Now, I really hope that makes sense to you. You need to have a healthy diet to obtain all of these vitamins, and then you're gonna get the benefits from it that your hair loss could improve as well, because there is evidence of this. There is no evidence of taking the vitamin supplement, so please don't bother wasting your money. Now, I know what you're probably thinking as well. You're probably thinking, well, healthy balanced diet, it sounds quite complicated. Well, my friends, not to worry, because Abraham the pharmacist, I've always got you covered and we've got a video all about healthy balanced diets, how to maintain a healthy balanced diet, going through it in real detail. It's a bit of a long video, I think it's about 10, 12 minutes, so it's gonna make this video extra long if we go through it. But if you do want to learn more about it, please do feel free to click on the link up here and I'll leave it in the description below. Now sometimes, even with the best hair care, the best diet, hair loss can still be a problem. This can be due to underlying health conditions or genetic conditions such as male or female pattern baldness. Now in these scenarios, you may need more specialist treatment to help with the hair loss. Now, for example, pattern baldness, it can affect anyone of any age. However, in women, it is more common after the menopause and in men, about half of Caucasian men will experience some level of pattern baldness before the age of 50. Now, pattern baldness presents differently in men and women. Men, for example, it usually begins with a receding hairline and then followed by the top of the hair. Okay, top of the head there. Women, however, they don't usually get a receding hairline. It's usually more thinning of the hair, usually towards the crown of the head as well. Now, the good news is that there are no physical symptoms associated with male or female pattern baldness. However, there are many psychological symptoms that you can get from it. For example, it can lower your self-esteem. It can make you feel low. It can make you feel more anxious. So if you do feel like your mental health is being affected at all by this, you do need to speak to a healthcare professional. Speak to them, get some advice from them. Now, one of the specialist treatments for pattern baldness is minoxidil liquid. It's applied directly to the area. It can take up to six months for you to really see the effects of it. You need to use it quite often as well. Usually the first two to eight weeks, sometimes you see a bit more hair loss, but then this does improve. And please remember though, still doesn't work for everyone. And in men, there's also a drug called finasteride that can be taken. This has been shown to help nine out of 10 men with hair loss who have mild to moderate male pattern baldness. However, it does come with quite a few side effects and problems that your healthcare professional will discuss with you. Now, sadly, there is no cure for pattern baldness. So for example, if you do stop using your minoxidil or the finasteride, 
usually the hair loss continues again and will go pretty much back to what it was before you started treatment. However, saying all that, please remember as well, there are quite a few non-medical treatment options out there as well. For example, wigs, hair extensions, hair fiber sprays, and a lot of these have all got really good now from what they were before, and you can't even really tell that people are wearing them or they've got hair fiber sprays or anything like that. And so, if you are interested in finding out more information about them, I will leave some in the description below, but please have an open mind to it as well, as could be really helpful for you. Now, like I mentioned at the start of this video, some level of hair loss is completely normal, but if you're noticing that your hair loss is increasing and your hair is looking thinner, then please do speak to a healthcare professional. That is one of the most important things because there may be certain underlying causes that are causing it which need to be addressed. So what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna have a little box that appears here with various different red flags for when you should speak to a healthcare professional. Please pause the video now, give them a read. If any of them apply to you and you haven't already spoke to your healthcare professional, please do. So it looks like we've come to the end of this week's video. I hope you found this information helpful. You're now a bit of a hair loss pro. You now know all about the dietary advice, the hair care tips. You know all about when to seek medical attention, what causes hair loss, how the hair grows and everything else. So you're a bit of a hair loss pro. I really hope you found this information helpful. If you have any of your own tips though, please do leave some comments below because I'd love to read it and I'm sure everyone else watching this video would too. As I always say, Always remember you're awesome and I will see you next week. Hey guys, thanks for watching this week's video. Make sure to click that like, follow or subscribe button now to stay up to date with new weekly videos.